Welcome back to an RPG Maker Unite tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to add tiles and groups, as well as show you an asset converter I created to easily get your previous RPG Maker content onto Unite as fast as possible. So with that said, let's get started. All right, so when you want to add your own custom tiles, you simply go to Map Settings and then Register Tile Data. From here, you're going to be presented with those tabs that you have when you are selecting a tile on the map to draw with it. And so the, here we can actually set what tiles are in what section. So for example, your auto tile A's, they're going to contain the ground auto tiles as well as animated auto tiles. So for water and stuff, they're also going to contain the tops of the cliffs. Basically anything that is set up to be like an auto tile was in RPG Maker, this section right here, this section right here, this section right here, those will all be in your auto tile A sections, whether they're animated or not. So now moving on to auto tile B, these are gonna be for the walls and for things like waterfalls, all right, which are still technically walls. But you can see that in here, you can see that this is gonna, section is gonna be for things like this area, these waterfalls right here, as well as these walls right here. So the base walls, these top part, these are gonna be in the auto tile A's, but these will be in the auto tile B's. Now, again, there's a way you can put them together to where they make sense through tile groups, but when you're implementing the tiles, they're going to be separate. So just keep that in mind. All right, so that's what those are gonna be. And then you have your auto tile C's, which are mainly squares. I'll show you an example of them, but basically the only thing I found them useful for is tables. Matter of fact, they use the same pattern of the auto tile A. So they still use the same pattern when you implement them. So just know you have that option as auto tile C. Then you have your standard tiles, which are going to just be your one-off tiles. You can just see that they're just your normal one-off tiles, which then leads to large parts where you can actually implement entire buildings and things like this, and then set how big they are based off the image. And then you have your effects, all right? So you can kind of tell right now that as I'm clicking on them, there's options on this left side. The big ones are is the passage. They can pass or they can't pass, stuff like this, directions. A lot of these settings are from previous RPG makers, and I may go into a more in-depth thing, but just note that you have things like this. You also have animation speeds and stuff like this. So if you come down here, you can see a list of image files that are available for our use. You can see that we have an A1 auto tile which again would go into this right here. So for instance, if I wanted to add this tile to auto tile A, which is where it would belong, all I would have to do is say that it is animated. And I would have to say that it is three frames long and that I want the animation speed to be about five. Or you could go four or something like this, but five is, is just a good start. And then what we would do is we would name it and we'd say water two, just so that it doesn't get confused because it already has it right here, but we're gonna create another one basically. I'm gonna click save. And then it's going to create that new tile, water two, and it's gonna appear down here. And now we're gonna have our access of passage. You can reset the animation speed if for whatever it didn't work or whatever. And then you can just set the settings right here. But now we have it added right here. So when we do go to a map, let's just say we go to, let's just do the starter to town here. And if we were to add that tile, we could see it now on here, all right? But it's not gonna be in a tile group yet because we haven't done a tile group for it. It's just gonna be in the tiles. So that's how you would add a tile. Now, let's go back to the register data. And so you can see that you can do this with, with all these ones. So you can see that the setup, it's showing like when you click on this, it's showing the setup like this, but that's however not how it actually is. For instance, if we search for one of those waterfalls down here. So here's an example, this outside A114, it's this waterfall section right here. It appears like this, but when you click on the resource it's using, it's actually set up like this. And in, if you go in GIMP and you actually look at how these are set up, they're set up very, very particularly. They have one pixel borders and they have borders between the images themselves. They're also scaled to match a 96 by 96 style uh, tile. It can get kind of confusing if you're coming from a previous RPG maker. And so what I have done, I've created an asset converter that helps you with this process. So in the pinned comment, I'll put a link for this asset. But you can just download it. It's called RPG Maker to Unite Asset Converter. You'll click into it. And from here, you're going to go to Tile Slicing. For instance, in this case, it actually has a bunch of options for character slicing. 
So you can slice a one character, eight character face set side view battler. You can also do tile sets, which is what I'm going to show off. And then you have your system stuff like icons, balloons, and states. But for instance, on the tile set, you're going to select the tile size. So I'm going to be converting a MV or MZ, I can't remember, but they are 48 by 48. And this way it knows the correct size to scale it to. And I'm going to say that it is a going to be an A1. I believe it is an A1. Select the image and it's going to be this A1 right here. So, yep, this is what we're going to do. I want these waterfalls right here, basically. And so I have the settings correct. I'm going to export them to my converted sprites folder and it's going to export them. So now if I go to that converted sprites folder, you can see that they are all set up in a way to import them. And they're even named what you need to import them as. So this is an auto tile A, but it's a static one. And and it's static, meaning that it's not animated. These are animated and et cetera, et cetera. This is an auto tile B animated one. So what I'll do simply is let's just do this one, this auto tile B right here. So we'll go back to Unity. We'll load a file. And then it's going to be, I'll just load this up real quick. We'll just do this one. All right, so the import was complete. So once it's imported, I'll just scroll down to where it was. And I believe it was called animated or auto tile A. So it will just show up as the top because it's all alphabetical. And I'm going to come here. It's going to be a type B because that's what I, I named it just for easy reference. It is animated. Number of frames is three. Animation speed is five. And then we'll give it a name called ice waterfall. And then I'm going to hit save. And now it has loaded up perfectly that waterfall image. So if I was go to map list and let's just go back to that starter tin town and let's destroy it a little bit. Let's add this tile right here. If I was to click on this and start to go like this, you can see that it is auto tiling that waterfall. And so if we go back to the tile set data here and see the converted sprites, you can see that I would implement this as an auto tile A and stuff like this. And it, it, this number on the end, it's just the iteration of the things that it's exporting and stuff like this. So hopefully that converter can help make this process easier. It's going to put them up at the top here with how they're named or wherever they're named, I guess. And then it's going to tell you where you need to put them. And so that was one of the biggest things I had to struggle with was how do I put these things in here? The standard tiles are pretty simple. You can basically go to the converter here you can select the A5 or the B through E's, for instance. You can just do an A5 right here and you'll export them into that same folder that I had them in. And you can see now they're just auto tiles because standard tiles are all imported separately, but it's going to scale them up to what you need and it's going to splice them all. So now if I wanted to add a standard tile, I would just load from here. I would, let's just say I want this one right here. So now that I've loaded it, I have to go find it. So it's standard. So it's going to be in the S S right here. So standard, it's going to be a standard tile. It's not animated. So I'm just going to leave it like this and I'll just call this glass floor and save it and scroll down here. And there is my glass floor. All right. And so that's just what you would do. Large parts are different. Large parts, what you're going to do, you're going to have to go inside a editor like GIMP or Photoshop. You're going to have to just line out the sprite how you want it and then just save that image like that and import it like just that image. And then you're going to save it as a large part. When you go to create a new one, you'll just click that it's a large part and then you'll save it and then go from there. That's how large parts work. All right. So the last thing to go over is tile groups. So if you click on here, you'll get a drop down of all the current groups that come with the editor just by default. You can always create a new tile group. And this is going to, once it's done down at the bottom, you'll be able to click on it and rename it. Say, you know, you have a trees tile group and all this is, is large parts of trees that you want. So what you would do is you'd go to this large part here. Let's just pretend this is a tree. For instance, you would add this to that group. And so now when you are in the map, if you remember, if when you're editing the map here on layer a, or let's just go to C and let's load tile group, we would go down and say trees, we want our tree tile group, and it's only going to give us that barrel. So that's it. But again, we can just interchange these tile groups on the fly, however we want to do it. So that's how you would create a new tile group. Now in order to add one, let's just say that we wanted to add to this outside four. And this is where I was saying that this is where you can actually get to where the A 
the auto tile A and the auto tile B, which is the wall. Remember the A is the top and then the B is the wall. You can get those together through tile groups. And so that's how you do that. So let's just say that I wanted to add that new waterfall that I created in B. Then I would just click on it and I would say add to group. And there it is. It's now in that group. So the last thing really to say about the tile group is that you can remove it from group. So I had that waterfall selected, I hit remove, and now it's gonna remove. And that is really all there is to cover about tile groups. You can delete full tile groups if you just don't want them anymore, you can also copy them. And then the, I guess the only other thing to really point out is to really make sure that you are paying attention to passage. I know I pointed this out at the beginning, but make sure that on your grounds, you're clicking them can pass and on your other stuff, you uncheck that because those are going to be your restrictions. There was one more thing I forgot to show. Let's just say that you wanted to delete this new tile that we made. All you would simply do is click on it and then click delete, and then that's going to delete it from this auto tile A. So you won't see it anymore, be able to use it, and you can always re-add it. So hopefully this video was helpful as far as importing assets and also that converter that I have that will easily get your previous RPG Maker, RTP, or DLC into RPG Maker Unite with just a click of a button. And so if there's any questions, comments below, Discord will get you figured out. And with that said, I'll see you at the next video.